Welcome one and all inside the Globe Studios. My name is Dante Stan and this is the Goshen News Weekend Wrap Up presented by Globe TV. We're back with more of the local stories that you need to know. As always, pieces represented in this weekend wrap up were originally reported by the Goshen News and rewritten for this TV format. In today's episode, we'll put a focus on Goshen schools and their ongoing search for a superintendent. And the kid mayor race is on and down to its final candidates. Before we get to that, negotiations for teacher salaries officially came to a close this past week at Goshen Community Schools. The teachers union had agreed to a new deal with starting salaries at $45,100, a 4.5% increase from 2022. That increase equates to about $2,000 extra dollars per year for teachers. Goshen Community Schools Chief Financial Officer Bob Evans says that the district accomplished what they felt that they could do and reached the majority of their goals. The 4.5% increase in salary is significant, although it does fall short of the 8% nationwide cost of living increase. Aside from salaries, Goshen Schools also added five days of paid leave options for maternity, surrogate, and adoption scenarios. Evans noted that it's becoming increasingly difficult to retain educators across the state as Indiana has historically been behind when it comes to teacher pay in the Midwest. The Goshen News reports that some of the district's financial troubles are associated with the loss of nearly 100 students throughout the school system in the past year. In continuing the conversation on Goshen schools, the district is set to soon solidify its choice for new superintendent. School Board of Trustees President Roger Nofziger announced earlier this week that the board has accepted a candidate that they'll look to formally hire to the position. The next step for official ratification includes the public posting of superintendent contract details, including benefits and pay. That official announcement will be made at December school board meeting. And wrapping up our coverage of the Red Hawks, Goshen Schools is reportedly one step closer to approving a new sports complex at Prairie View Elementary School. During Monday night's board meeting, the monetary details for a new softball and baseball complex were sent through at $14,765,000. Now, the district clarified that the project is not expected to increase tax rates throughout the area as other planned projects have actually been dropped from the docket. Now let's move over to City Hall. While November 7th may have been election day, there's still one race that has yet to be tallied, the race for Kid Mayor. All six candidates gathered at Monday night's Goshen City Council meeting to speak about what platforms they'll be running on. Each candidate is a member of the Goshen Community School's fourth grade class and had the chance to share what their goals would be should they be elected to the position. Some of the issues mentioned including providing more children's activities at restaurants, that's a great idea, working towards a cleaner Goshen, and the addition of recycling containers in the downtown area. The election itself will happen at school on December 1st, and the winner will be announced during the December 4th City Council meeting. Good luck to all the candidates. At this past Monday's council meeting, newly elected Mayor Gina Lichty officially proclaimed this upcoming Sunday, November 19th, as Women's Entrepreneurs Day in the city of Goshen. Of the businesses within Goshen City Limits, 77 are women-owned, which accounts for just 17% of the total figure. Mayor Lichty did note that while more growth is needed, the city does boast a higher percentage than the county number, which sits at just 8%. Now, 91.1 The Globe was present at this council meeting to gather details of the proclamation as it happened, and the full feature on the day and its local impact will be released this coming Monday. That's going to do it for this week's edition of the Weekend Wrap-Up. Again, all stories presented during the show were originally reported by the Goshen News and rewritten for this video format. We hope you'll follow along with Globe TV and our other projects, which are available on our YouTube page at 91.1 The Globe, our website, globeradio.org, and our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly Twitter, and the Globe Radio app. We hope you continue to make this show a part of your weekly routine as we release new episodes each Saturday. Thanks for watching the Weekend Wrap-Up. Until next time, I'm Don St. Stanley.